Good morning to you, my friends, wherever you may be in the world today. Uh, Alan Clemens here from Blessed Ubud, Bali. I had been here for the first six months of the pandemic, and now I'm back after a rigorous multi-continent, multi-city, temporary residence last two months and an extremely challenging last two years, speaking the obvious for all of us. Um, but I'm back and I'm going to use my voice, my heart, my spirit to the best of my ability to bring forth you know, the insights that I feel that are relevant to me and possibly others. So thank you for tuning in. This is the introduction, a short introduction to this new Bali series that I hope to do daily here at 9 a.m. from Ubud. And uh, there's just so much in my heart. I came here to to script, if you will, to write this, this new film, this passion project that I have that's titled Raw War. It's not about violence. It's about confronting the violence. And I've used this, this phrase, the, the spiritual battle, if you will, of our life of perhaps all battles on this precious planet. Uh, I'm not trying to be a scaremonger or a, a, a fear pornographer. There's enough of that bullshit, uh, to put it mildly. Uh, but it's that place in me, maybe you can resonate, the maverick, the rebel, the activist, the, the person who just fucking cares about the context, as crazy as it is, and about the children and about the about to be born and the animals and the earth and the air and wants to participate in revolution. And um, in our own small, simple, beautiful way, the way that we hold our body, the way that we make contact with our, our own posture, the way that we feel the, the trauma of the last two, two and a half years plus eternity running through our own veins and our body, our DNA. How could we not feel the 11 million people that perished mercilessly in the Holocaust, the wars? I mean, to feel the suffering that has preceded us is a very epic calling of the heart. And I would call that the calling of love, the calling of compassion. And Raw War for Me, the film, Seven Parts, is based on a rewrite of this book, uh, a novel that I wrote last year in lockdown in Los Angeles called Extinction X-Rated. I've been really quiet about the book. Uh, I find it to be the most potent, honest, piece of writing that I've ever done. Uh, and I'm determined to see it as the foundation of this film. And I love being in animation, spontaneity, improvisational, I call it existential jazz, because there's something that comes out in the naturalness of that eroticism for me that I can't script, that I can't write, but I want to put it down as close as I can on paper and then riff from my soul. Uh, and it, I, seven parts is because it takes 10 hours and 30 minutes to read the entire book. But I'm not going to read the entire book. I'm going to use just segments of it and then improvisationally riff for 21 days and create this series of film called Raw War. It'll never be seen anywhere outside of the super uber underground because I'm not going to hold back. There's no way that I'm going to self-censor. In fact, I'm going to come so far out of, I don't have a closet that I can see, but come so far out 
that, that I only want to know myself in truth and not in conformity to saying it sufficiently so that more people can hear it. I want the spontaneity of the eroticism of the way that I am true to myself in the most intimate expression of conscience and caring and self-respect and dignity, yes, skillfulness in context, but you know, they're playing smash mouth now. Davos, Biden regime, the global elitist Xi Jinping of China, you know, virtually unnoticed on the world stage. The anniversary of Tiananmen Square, just the anniversary, the bloodbath of mercilessly killing boys and girls who said no to totalitarianism and they were just massacred, an anniversary. It just kind of goes, I don't know, for those family members, the trauma is so real, right? And a year before Tiananmen Square, Burma, August 8, 1988, infamous dates, 8888, when Burma's second great uprising for freedom and independence from the, from the first uprising against the white imperialists. Let us be clear about that. Just like in Canada, just like in America, just like in Australia, the imperialist white, you can barely call it religious, zealot, hyper patriarchal craziness out of Europe and UK that swept the world and wherever it went, it committed genocide and mass murder and rape and incarceration. Yeah, 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 that's the nature of life, but it happened. Burma's great first awakening was to, to, to challenge the white imperialist who invaded Burma for 135 years based on Winston Churchill's father, who was the governor general of India in the 1800s, and said, I want to pluck this incredible, fertile, verdant country of thousands of years of history, 135 different ethnicities, a matriarchal intersecting culture of extravagant, intimate animism and Buddhism, and all the various other forms of conscious exploration of context. And then in 8888, there was a million people that eventually took to the streets in the dictatorship, dictatorship. Raw war is about exploring the consciousness of dictatorship and the insidious collusion, if you will. My collusion with paying for murder. I pay tax dollars so that American can kill people in my name and lie to me that they've done it. There are the overt wars and the weaponry of the Ukraine and other places around the world. And there are the clandestine drone assassinations and mass murders that go on essentially unrecognized but paid for by our CIA and various other institutions of oppression. We all know that. And so I'm thinking about the collusion that to me is so many good people are marginalized by unrecognized toxic collusion with, with inertia, with apathy. And it's not even felt as inertia as apathy. It's felt as I'm doing yoga, I'm processing my own trauma, I'm doing psychedelics, I'm low dosing, I'm ketamine spraying up my anus to, to anesthetize my radical sense of awakening crazy, mad awakening. And I think it really takes a meditation today that's really, you know, that isn't soft peddling the truth. And so I want to go into this film set. I'm going to give myself two months to script it, to write it, and then get into a deep improvisational rave with it. I'm looking for a female videographer who wants to hang with me and a couple of other people to help support a very intimate solo 21 day, 30 day shoot, probably in Vancouver and or on Maui. Um, there's reasons for that. I don't want to explain it right now. And get down. Another thing here in the introduction, you know, just a couple of days ago, and thank you for tuning in. And it really means a lot to me to have, have you in my life. Um, 
that I learned through the grapevine that two very dear friends of mine in Burma, two activists from the 8888 generation, who had served many years in prison in Burma as political dissidents, um, were arrested a few months ago and were in an Orwellian mock trial given death sentences. The country's undergoing genocide right now. My friend uh, Aung San Suu Kyi, many other elected uh, officials are, are incarcerated, imprisoned in undisclosed locations. The country is in a dystopian nightmare. They're burning it to the ground. They're raping the girls and the women. They're killing off food supplies. It, it's, it's beyond. And is it a precursor to planet Earth? Possibly. Um, but two very close friends, Ko Jimmy and Zayathal. I know Zayathal very well. He was the man who was most instrumental in initiating rap music and hip hop music to Burma, Myanmar. And he had a group called Acid. They became political dissidents. He was arrested. He eventually ran for political office back in the, uh, the breakthrough moments in the early 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 20 era. Became a very close ally and supporter and attendant to Do Aung San Suu Kyi. And just two days ago, the, the terrorist organization that has taken over the country by Burma's Pol Pot, his name is Ming Online. Uh, he used to be the former general of the army. He's a dictator, but no, he's a terrorist along the lines of, of, of Pol Pot. Not the early stages of the Khmer Rouge, but sort of like the, the early to mid stages of the Khmer Rouge. And very, very, I'm not trying to vilify him any more than he vilifies himself through his behavior. But it's shocking to see that human consciousness, and I know I'm saying things that are very naive, especially for someone who's been in war zones and have written about genocide. I just can't quite get over the fact that primarily men, not only men, but women collude, but primarily men do what they do in the name of truth, of democracy, of freedom, of civility, of independence, they use all the right monikers and words to, to commit evil. And they, they announced to the world and to the people of Burma that Zayathal and Ko Jimmy, both married with children, we're all children, we're all married. Why do I make that statement as if it's something special? We're kin to the earth, to the birds, to the air, I mean, <laughs> and they announced that they will execute these two gentlemen shortly by hanging. And I moan and groan and I victimize myself that my life isn't quite the way that I want it to be. Then I was trying to think and feel into what's going down for Kojimi and Zayathal alone in a prison cell with the announcement they're going to be hung. And I'm going like, oh my God, they don't have a hand to hold. They don't have a text. They don't have an emoji. They don't have the fantasy of love, of intimacy, of sexuality, of a kiss, of a soft bed, a pillow, a meditation retreat. They don't have anything. They're in the dungeon of hopelessness with only conscience. Well, raw war is going to address those two gentlemen and all the other political dissidents around the world in my own humble ability. I'm fired up to speak out and, okay, midway through, thank you for tuning in. Um, so that's one announcement. I am deeply ensconced in this process. I don't know where it's going to go, but I'm in it. I've got a retreat that has been put into place, which I'm blessed to say, July 25th through July 31st here at an exquisite temple uh, on the island in deep nature. And for seven days, six nights, it's now just been announced. And I'm going to limit it to 15 people. It's being gifted freely. Um, it's just my way of wanting to share 
And if you're interested to attend and you're serious about it, just simply DM me and let me know why you, file, you feel that it would be right for you. And we already have, it's half full already in the first day, so I would just suggest that you reach out quickly. And I'm very thrilled about being in the company of a few people, not to teach, but to, to be primarily in meditative silence, to reflect, to write. I'll do what I can to guide the retreat, uh, to bathe in nature and to feel. To feel is, is my reason to be right now. To feel into, into, to just resonate in a more intimate, elegant, conscious, feminine way with the vulnerability, with the grief, with the sadness, with the hurt, and with the love. With the love, the love of courage, the love of grace. And I'll end here. Um, <clears throat> am I hopeful? I have a 15-year-old daughter. I'm a lover. I'm a romantic. As much as I try to recraft my psychological orientation to language and to intimacy and to sexuality, I feel that I'm a kind of a Dharma-oriented artistic poet at my soul, and it's a renegade poetry. I just don't want to belong to the club of anything. I don't want to belong to the orthodoxy of, of a system. And I know that I'm embedded in the geometry, in the physics, in the architecture of thisness. But I think that novelty and originality and the orgasm, if you will, is so trans-effable. It just the ineffable, the inexplicable. And I want to anoint myself in caring and respect, but I want to learn to live and play more in the existential, elegant anarchy of my own innate soul, if you will. I've been down with anarchy now for about 25 years. I've called it existential anarchy. I was recently introduced to a concept that was new to me called relationship anarchy. And with it, a language of mutuality, which I've been down on for some time. I call it eroticized Ubuntu. It's my, my own unique way of talking about the poetry of mutuality, where there's high harmony, but not confined to the limits of culture and patriarchy and unrecognized capitalism, unrecognized hierarchy, unrecognized non-cooperation. So many ways in which we're just not aware in which we're embedded that we live out through these unrecognized systems of control by the man, by the system, by the politics, by the, uh, the quote I've by the, the, the authoritarianism embedded at the core, if you will, of, of the authoritarian genome embedded in the psyche of the ignorance of consciousness. I've called it a fucking bad design when I'm more satirical and humorous, and Raw War is going to be radically satirical, dark comedic satire. I've researched the Holocaust. They did not lose humor. Most did, but most who lived through Treblinka and Auschwitz, Dachau, the other camps, they kept it alive. I want to keep it alive. And I've learned from my friends in Burma, those who survived the worst torture are the ones who refused to capitulate to the fear and to the terror. They kept it alive even when crucified, guillotined, macheted, so rad, so, so rad to keep freedom alive over fear. Tomorrow, I'm thinking I want to talk about the role of language, because when I think about the opposite of patriarchy and violence, I think it's the absence of understanding the beauty of, of words, of language, of communication, rather than berating each other through guns and weapons and drones and long and short range missiles, Mr. Biden. Call off your sickness, dude. Come on, Putin. Come on, world. Stop killing in the name of thinking you need to kill. 
where is the outcry? De-escalate, 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 right? Come down off the pedestal of righteous indignation that murder is right under any circumstances. I don't want to get into a philosophical debate. We need to really stand on the edge like that sole person that stood in front of the tank in Tinum Square and said, here, take me, okay? I don't know where he or was it or she that stood before the world and said no to murder. Raw war is saying no to that. Because if we don't say no to it, there'll be no earth to save. We're already over the edge, it seems, like with extinction, with out of control nuclear weaponry, with my own complicity with the fossil fuel denial of everything that I do and the electrification of the world to even broadcast this live stream of across the Facebook platform and YouTube and blah, blah, blah. It makes me sick on some core level that I play in the collusion of the hyper hypocrisy, if you will, of having to participate in harm in order to communicate nonviolence. The conundrum the hypocrisy, the innate fraudulence coming out of denial, coming out of deception. If we all just stood still right now for an hour, for a day, for a fucking couple of minutes, and we just put in a kind of moderate dose of a psychedelic, and I can tell you raw war like Extinction X-rated is heavily infused with the psychedelic. I'm not going to get too far into that. But it promotes novelty. It promotes originality. It promotes taking oneself to the edge of one's own unrecognized collusion with limitation. And there you must feel either you're going to self-destruct into your intimacy or you'll concretize that collusion and feel more empowered in your own delusion. Maybe you'll come out in a more authoritarian manner. It's hard to know. There's nothing intrinsic in the psychedelic molecule that you can guarantee freedom. But my point here is the feminine infused psychedelic in the context of that, that to me is the ingredient, along with mindful intelligence. And if only we could introduce that awakening, and that's what I really want to get down here with Raw War, can I talk to Xi Jinping? Can I talk to, to the authoritarian Biden? Can I talk to Klaus Schwab? Can I talk to Bill Gates? Can I talk to Dr. Anthony Fauci? Can I talk to these people in a civil way? They're asking me, Alan, you have my attention. What would you say to me? I would say, open your mouth, please. I'm going to be a temporary friend to you. And if you will voluntarily take the substance, I'll hold space with you along with your family, your tribe and your wives in the world. And let's go on a journey together. And that series from Bali, this is part one. I want to go on a, a spontaneous journey over the next 45 days until the retreat begins on July 25th. And let's just see where we go together, unplanned, spontaneous, raw, improvisational, existential, relational, intimate, emotional anarchy, which is beautiful, erotified intimacy. So from my heart to yours, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being in my life. Hope to see you tomorrow uh, at this time, 9 a.m. from Bali, God willing, uh, and have a beautiful day. Thank you so much.